share a little bit more about redeeming the time of great injustice. You know, Jesus loves to bring justice. He does. And that's a big, huge part of redemption is the Lord King Jesus. He actually brings justice with him. And I want to tell you, uh, number one, I want to tell you, sir, I'm so sorry for all that you've been through this last year. And I'm sorry because there is suffering and there is persecution. And a lot of people that are watching have suffered incredible loss and they've suffered incredible persecution. Um, I have friends all over the world and our teams all over the world. And we have seen incredibly difficult and hard things. And I don't want to make light of any of those things because those things are dark and they are evil and they are terrible. I think that the shift that has to take place has to do with a couple of different things because it reminds me of the book, um, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times and the worst of times. And I think that the closer that we get to the return of King Jesus, the more extreme things are going to be. That the things that are good and the breakthroughs that we're seeing are incredibly amazing. And also the things that are against us are mounting. And both of those things are going on at the same exact time. So Jesus talked about if your eye is evil, then your entire body is evil. And it has to do with the lens of how we're able to see things. Now, I can be in a terribly a terrible situation and be experiencing great, great, great pain. And what's real is I can't help but feel that. I can't help but feel the pressure. I mean, it's real, but I'm not alone. And I'm, when I say I'm not alone, I say, I mean, I have the, I have the ability, the God given grace to literally invite the presence of Jesus into this situation, not just to bless me from there and send a blessing towards me, but to actually step into this with me, as I know that you have over and over and over again throughout the years, you wouldn't be alive if you didn't have the presence of Jesus within your life. And so we all know that. But there's there is a way that we can literally you know, Brother Jim, this great injustice I was talking about of me being thrown out of Bible college when I was a young man, uh, it wasn't until 2015 or 2014 that I literally just stopped, just went, I need to quit. I have been so ashamed of that, and it hurt so bad, and it was such a bad time in my life, and it spun me off a little bit. I need to invite the Lord back into that place, literally into it, not just metaphorically, but ask for the manifest presence of Jesus. And that's the glory of God. And we know that whenever Brother Moses, he said, Lord, I want to see your glory. I want to see your glory. God said, okay, I shall cause my goodness to pass before you. That when God shows up in his glorious way, or what is it? It's his visible awesomeness. It's his tangible presence. Uh, our Hebrew brothers and sisters call it the weighty presence of God. He shows up as goodness. And we know that goodness overcomes evil. The Bible says, do not be overcome with evil, but rather overcome evil with good. And goodness is attached to the manifest presence of Jesus. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you're not subject to time. You know, you're, <laughs> it doesn't matter if I invite you into now or into my future, or into my past, you're not subject to time in any way whatsoever. Lord God, be with me on that day that that man spoke so shamefully to me. Be with me on that day where my heart was so broken be with me on that day, Lord God, and I rely upon you. And then, boom, it changed my now. And all of a sudden, that same exact Bible college began to require its students to read my book. Well, that ask, inviting the Lord into that place and asking and believing in the power of redemption is everything for us as believers. To literally see the goodness of God, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Personally experience that. So what's real is we're going to suffer. We, we are going to suffer per persecution. We are going to suffer hard times. We are going to have things taken away from us. But what's real is this. Where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. And we will not be dismayed. We will not stop. We will not fall back. We will not just decide to, we're going to sit around and rock back and forth and freak out. That's not what we're going to do. Man, we're going to be the people of God and we can, and we can have courage because we know that God is with us. And that's what the Lord told brother Joshua, have courage, have courage, have courage for I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Being able to see the presence of Jesus and view everything from the lens of I'm not alone and God is with me 
is everything. And we need to pray for a greater and greater, greater eye to be able to see that. 